The Elf Classic starts here at the Eastport Yacht Club, and then they sail across to their destination, which in this case will be the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in St. Michael's. The Classic race is based upon the original race that happened in Marblehead, Massachusetts, where the owners of the sailboats would come by train to Marblehead, and when they arrived in the station, the whistle on the train would go off. The owners would run across town, get into their skiffs, and row out to the boat, which is out in a mooring, ready to go, all prepped with the crew for sailing. They would sail a race, come back in, get back in that skiff, row back into the dock, run up onto the dock, and ring a bell. And that was the winner of the race. We do the same, roughly the same thing here. We leave from the yacht club here to the boats, which will be out, sitting out here. And when we fire the whistle, the owners will get in those dinghies, they'll run across the field here, get in the dinghies, and row out, and then sail over to St. Michael's. So it's a, it's a fun challenge as opposed to starting a race out in a traditional manner. Uh, five o'clock, so that'll be uh, in the play of the day. There you go, it's a start. <laughs> Henry, what's the problem? Hey, Pete, this is pretty funny. Oh, look at that thing. Henry, who would have done something like that? <laughs> who would have tied all those knots oh, in the boat? Hey, easy there. Hey, Pete, that's enough. Henry, who would have tied all those knots in your line? Imagine, who would be The Elf Regatta represents actually a, a group of people who really have a passion for boats. And this is not something that is easily done to actually maintain large boats like this. It takes a lot of time, energy, and funds. And it's really nice to see a group of very, very passionate people who actually all get together and race these boats together. And this is sort of fun because these are all different kind of boats. I mean, we have boats here from the Chesapeake Bay, we have boats from New Jersey, we have boats from Barnegat Bay, we have boats from Long Island Sound, all racing together. And uh, the only thing that brings us all together is our passion for sailing. You know, a race like this brings people together. It cuts across a lot of lines. You get to meet a lot of people that you otherwise wouldn't. The boat is a great common denominator. It really unites people who have a love of sailing, a love of the water. They love to teach each other and be with each other, share. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, where you come from, what your profession was. It's just good to be together on the water. Hold the boom, please. Hold that all the way in. The strategies of the race are kind of interesting because you have to figure the amount of sail you have up for, the conditions, and you want to do your fastest without breaking gear. Is that a new wind line coming in up on our bow? Sailing an old boat requires a lot of skill. It's the Elf was built in 1888. We're going to have a log canoe for the first time uh, in the race, and it was built in 1895. I don't think a log canoe has raced across the bay or sailed across the bay in probably 70 years. These boats are not what you would call very stable. She has a six-foot beam and a 31-foot water line. The foremast with the kite up is at about 65 feet. The uh, main mist is at 38 feet. Both of those masts are longer than the uh, water line of the boat. You have a six foot uh, beam, and it's a canoe pointed at both ends. It tends to be a little tippy. How are we doing on the Elf? Yeah, we're coming yeah, over. Yeah. Dive and we're overtaking both. Keep turning left. Yep, I want, the, I want the wind on the beam, a little further forward the beam. Perfect, hold that angle there. So, uh, 68 foot Sparkman Stevens Black Watch. She's gorgeous. She was the old Tabor boy out of uh, Tabor for years. Apparently, uh, she was commissioned by the Navy during World War II to chase off subs and was actually shot at, believe it or not, by German subs. Did you know that? The 
Elf Classic is important because it gives the owners and the caregivers for a lot of historic boats an opportunity to get out there with, their, with people who think the way they do, that, that, that these old boats represent an important part of America's cultural heritage. Today, what's not to like? Perfect day. Breeze on the corner, current behind us. What we want to do is make sure that the classics on the bay, you know, have a place to do this kind of thing. And it's important for the museum, it's important for our organization, and it's just great to see all the pretty boats together. That's really, really it. I hope, of course, that we start to get some younger people involved too. So are you like the tactician? Are you telling them where to go, kind of? <laughs> I've never sailed really a boat this size competitively before. I normally sail dinghy boats, so I just thought it was really exciting. When I first saw the boat, I was just like, wow. It's one of the prettiest boats I've ever seen. I'm just really excited to be here. And it's really nice to see the tradition of like the bigger boats that really was where sailboat racing started. It's just amazing seeing all these boats out here. It's like, you wouldn't usually see them all. You'd see once in a blue moon these boats, but having them all here on the bay racing to one place is just surreal. Yeah. It was interesting, sailing on the boat today, I was thinking, my God, my children would absolutely adore being on this boat right now. That's what this is all about, is, is how, do we, how do we save sailing? The, beauty, the, the beautiful part of sailing. And we can all jump in a fiberglass hull boat and, and, and go and have fun and sail fast and get up on hydrofoils and but, but, but this is, there's something about this. It's serene, it's sleek, it's, it's magical. The race was great fun. We, uh, you know, we hit a, a wonderful breeze coming out of uh, Annapolis and uh, you know, we had, a, we had a full boat and a great crew. We were honking. We were last out of the harbor on purpose because we really felt that that was the way to do it. And the wind died. A little puff coming down, we could roll down. And, and we struggled. There was a good breeze in the, in the start of the race. Uh, kind of died over, died out when we came over towards the eastern shore. Um, and it was real bad in the mouth of the eastern bay. And now it's just a matter of there's spots here and there where it's at, but it's not very consistent. It was very fun coming across the bay. We had great breeze. Um, turned the corner, still had good breeze, but as we sailed up towards St. Michael's, it just continued to die and die and die. Which is, now we're in the hole. So we're sitting waiting for the wind to fill in from the south-southeast, which is what's supposed to happen. But we just don't know if it will. Racing across the bay was fantastic. We made it all the way across uh, dry, and then we get into the eastern bay and we ended up capsizing. Made it up the eastern bay, feeling good. We're in our home waters, uh, feeling very confident, and then uh, very light air, and out of nowhere, big gusts came, and uh, we couldn't climb the boards fast enough, really nothing we could do. Yeah. And uh, we went swimming, but it was a great time. We'll be back next year. Well, uh, we, the race started out. Uh, somebody tied a, tied a whole bunch of knots in uh, Henry's painter, so he was about 30 or 40 seconds off the dock. So I got a question. Henry Coley was last off the dock because he had a, oh. a line foul, I think? Uh, but some terrible person went down and tied Henry's painter with 72 knots. Hey, Henry, who would have done something like that? <laughs> no. To slow down his aggressive nature. Uh, <laughs> you think that's inherited? You think that's genetic? <laughs> but, the, but the reality is Henry's in the first place vote right now. Uh, I think. Well, what do you expect? <laughs> Although someone completely sabotaged our rowboat at the start, uh, we managed pretty well. We got out ahead of the fleet, uh, made it through the doldrums, and uh, and we almost made it to the club. We were about 15 minutes short of, uh, of making the time limit. So. Folks, I'm Bill Sontag and Along with my wife, Deborah Albers, we help organize this on behalf of the Classic Out Restoration Guild every year. Here, here. Deborah's right there. 
I've been sailing elf since 1971. We've spent a lot of time helping to restore, and it's just great to have a event that brings a lot of boats that are like her together. Well, that's what it's all about. You know, you get these guys that, that, that truly love the classics and truly believe that, that, that holding on to history is far more important than the advent of technology because this epitomizes sailing. This is what it's all about. You know, it's funny because we're all local Marylanders that race these log canoes and we're kind of in our own little bubble. And to now be exposed to these other classic boats has been really a whole nother level for us to um, meet other people that appreciate the same kind of boats that we have. I want to thank everyone for being here today and participating uh, today. I want to thank uh, the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum for having us and uh, yay, and being part of the program. Uh, the uh, Eastport Yacht Club has been uh, wonderful to help us get started over there. These regattas have to exist because after, after these boats are gone, no one's going to know anything about, about how they sailed, what they looked like, what they felt like. The way they handled in heavy, light air, you just don't know. The Elf Classic plays a critical role in enhancing the restoration of antique and classic boats and keeping that passion alive. And to me, that is so critically important because if we don't embrace it and don't work together, we're going to lose them. We're going to lose them forever.